Hello together. Today I will introduce you to the new NIF54L15 developer kit from Nordic. So it's a developer kit for the NIF54 series. Um, you can order it already, I think, uh, since around one year. I just newly ordered it and got it from DigiKey. So we will do a short unboxing. Um, I say my first impression. Then we will program some Plinky example, and I will also program an external LED and so that we can control the GPIO port. So you see here's a package. It's a typical environment-friendly uh, paper package from Nordic. It's simple, but uh, it's enough, and we save a little bit. Packages there. So it's just the board inside, actually, not more. We open it. Oh, oh, oh. So, and what I can see already is that it's smaller than the older developer kit. Not much, but a little bit, yeah. This is the uh, basic other side. This is the developer kit. And uh, for comparison, you can see. So older one is a little bit bigger from the NIF 52840. And uh, yeah, it's handy. And you have the nothing on the back side, not like from the NIF 54 uh, series there. You had a battery and um, so on. So, so when you're seeing here the board, uh, it's a little bit different designed than the and a 52840 board. We don't have uh, the pins like for the Arduino Uno or so Shield here or something. We have here th the three ports so GPIO port 0, 1, and 2. Since the NIF 54L15, which we're having here, has uh, three ports, GPIO ports all together, then we have here the NIF. C connector for the antenna, uh, NFC antenna, which is also inside from the package, and having again four LEDs. The so numbering starts from LED zero this time, so it's fit also better to the device tree. Having four buttons. Um, what's really positive, we're having only one switch, uh, so it's not confusing so much. We're having just an on-off switch. So for the beginners, it's much easier. We're having here uh, the power regulator, so PM, uh, NPM 1300, which uh, can be also configured with, um, with the voltage, uh, what the NIF54L15 get here. We check this also later. We are having here the debugger, which is quite interesting because you see here it's the N5340, uh, so it's uh, actually the serial before. Maybe they have just enough from these SOCs to use this one as um, Sega um, a debugger. I don't know, but uh, yeah, so we're having actually two Nordic chips here on board. We have a reset button and, which is of course also positive, we're having a USB-C connector here. Now let's try to create a blink here example. So I'm making here copy a sample. Then I'm choosing the blink here. I'm using the second one here, safe air samples. And since I have already one blink here, I call it an F54 L15 DK. And we have, of course, to create a build. And the target board is the NIF 
Uh, choose here, so Nordic kits only. Sana F54. L15 DK CPU app. Yeah. Just generate. So when it's finished, we just flash it. We can now flash it again with a button here. Um, since device is connected. And like we see here, the LED is blinking. So at least the uh, basic blinky example is working. So what's new uh, uh, with this developer board comp comparable with the NIF52840? You see uh, the chip is of course different. We have now an ARM Cortex M33. We have there also higher um, SOC speed and uh, also a co-processor. The memory uh, is the same size, so non-volatile memory is uh, bigger, and we're having this time also a 40-bit ADC. What's interesting when you compare this board with the old NIF52840 uh, developer board, uh, not only the pin headers are totally different, also, you're having here like two switches. You can choose the power supply uh, if it's from the USB port, or there is also a um, battery which you can use, or connect a LiPo and so on. And it's also um, charged uh, when you plug in the USB port, as I remember. And here's another switch where you can deactivate and activate the debugger part and using only. NIF, so you could use this USB port. So we had two USB port, but it was sometimes really confusing for the people which starting with it, which one to use. And uh, so normally you have to use this one. Uh, this is all not on the new developer board. It's then much easier and also it's straight lying down, so no battery down. Uh, so disadvantages are that there is there no uh, possibility to uh, power it 100% with uh, external power supply, except you solder something. I think there is a resistor which you have sent to resolder to using only here the supply voltage. You can supply it already now here, but then only the NIF54 is uh, getting power from this part. And you have still to connect the USB for the uh, debugger part and the LEDs. Yeah. So for developing, it's quite nice. Uh, for a use case, um, then the sheer O board, for example, makes much more sense. You have, of course, like always with Nordic, a good uh, data sheet and user guide. Um, you're seeing what's all inside here. Uh, you have an external memory, 8 megabyte flash, you have buttons, LEDs, crystal, NFC, antenna, reset button, and so on, all quite good documented. Yeah, this here is the NFC antenna, which is also in the package. And you're seeing the upper and downer description, uh, the block diagram, and so on. And you're seeing the Blinky example, there is also a printf statement here inside. Um, let's check. There are two serial ports. There's a COM7 in my case. There is no output. And uh, it's this time in COM12. You're seeing that we're getting here is a print output. So, okay, let's adjusted to control an own um, GPIO all output and we are using the GPIO zero so we define it first GPIO node label we get it from the device tree GPIO one and um, 
then we have to define like normal uh, device and check if this is ready. Yeah, so GPIO one device, we get it from the node label. I ask if this GPIO is ready and um, yeah, I remove the GPIO from us here from the example. In the next step, I make it as output. Yeah, we're using the GPIO pin configure, uh, giving the device structure. And um, yeah, let's use pin seven as output. Uh, I use it as also at the GPR, um, GRO board and make it output when it's um, active. Okay, and then I first will set it only, uh, I will not toggle it. I will Set it first. So set yeah, where you want. So set this is set active because I want to measure the power. Okay, try to build it. Okay, LED is not used, it's not a problem. Uh, I can read it then, so it's better to get rid of it. And flash it on the board. I just measure the voltage output at the GPIO port one seven and I got zero. So this is what uh, was what I didn't want. Uh, but I found already where the problem is when you are checking here in the device tree, you see here so overview. Yeah? Here are the LEDs. You seeing here the ports, we having here port two, um, pin nine, port one, pin 10, uh, port two, pin seven and port one. Pin 14 for the LEDs is okay, but the problem is when I look here, the UART 20 is active too, and there is a pin 1, 0 already, uh, 7 is already used. So I change it to 8 now. This is free and should work. Make again a flash. So I now measure the voltage output. I hope it will work that you see. This is why I didn't connect directly. Um, port there, you're seeing we're having 1.8 volt. Yeah. So uh, where is it? Yeah, 1.8 volt. This is uh, supply voltage from the NIF50. Or when I use a normal LED to connect there, of course, this is not enough voltage. And what can we do now? Uh, yeah, different ways, of course. You're seeing here we're having the uh, power management chip, the NPM 1300. Yeah, and when you're reading here, this is uh, that's a VDD uh, programmable voltage from 1.8 volt to 3.3 volt. Uh, and uh, we have to use the NIF connect for desktop board configurator. So NIF connect for desktop the application. And let's install the board configurator.
Here we have our device. And just set it here to 3.3 volt and let's check it again. So let's now check the voltage. So here's a ground. So it's been eight. And we're seeing 3.3 volt yeah. so now we can connect an led like you see now i connected here an led on the pin 8 from port 1 and uh, with a 200 ohm resistor now we can also toggle this led and let it blink. Ah, of course, parameter doesn't fit. So, like you see, our LED is blinking. My first impression from the NIF54L15 developer kit is quite good. You have there now a USB-C port, which makes it easy to plug in with the computer. Um, you don't have so many switches, so for beginners, it's not so confusing how to make the settings. Uh, you have the GPIO port structured now, the pin headers, um, is GBIO 0, 1, and 2, and not the Arduino shield. There's again a debugger on board and programmer. Um, so the LEDs starting now from LED 0, the writing which fitting to the device tree. Uh, it's quite easy to use. <coughs> on the other hand, when you want to uh, make your own home projects where you need a battery powered device, Maybe then you have to switch better to the Shear or NIF 54 L15 board since say, you can connect directly in LiPo and uh, it's getting charged via USB power and so on. So, see you in the next video.